it's Stephen Key here, and I have a very special guest. Um, now, your name always throws me off. Please <laughs> pronounce it correctly for me and for everybody else. Azel. Azel. What? Azel. Azel. Okay, very good. Okay. Yeah. I'm so happy to have you on. Because, yeah, I'm really happy to be here. Well, you know, you're amazing. And I'll tell you the reason why I think you are, is that you're a toy inventor? Yes? Yeah, yeah. Toy inventor, toy designer, toy packaging person, design director. I've done it all. You done have. All. You have. Yeah. And it's really cool. And, and yeah. because I know there's a lot of people that are listening that might want to be a toy inventor. And right. sometimes it just seems impossible. Mm -hmm. So I want to talk about the process for, for just a minute. and But I want to step yeah. back in time because how do you become, I mean, I know you, you worked for a company, but how do you, what did you do to become a toy inventor? How did you start? Right. I mean, there are a ton of different routes to being a toy inventor, but I, I personally started with a toy design degree at the Fashion Institute of Technology. So I actually got a degree in toy design and... That, exi that actually exists? <laughs> yeah, yeah, that exists. Um, there are two schools in the U.S. that do it. I know there are a couple in other countries now that also have toy design degrees. But um, in the U.S., it's the Otis College of Art and Design. It's the Fashion Institute of Technology. Okay. And you can just get a degree in toy design, focusing on designing toys and games for kids. <laughs> okay, so one day you decided, I mean, right. you just woke up and said, you know, I think I'm going to study toy design. Is that how that works? No. No, I, I have wanted to always work with kids, okay. you know, so I always wanted to work with kids. I went from wanting to be a teacher to wanting to be a child psychologist right. to, to actually, I studied exhibition design for a little bit and I was going to do children's exhibitions. And then I heard of the toy program from an exhibition design teacher at FIT. Um, and I just didn't believe it was a real thing. So I took like a, a preliminary course. And I made the most horrifying toys ever. Like they were so bad. <laughs> they were so bad. Um, but the, you know, the head of the department saw something in me and she took me under her wing and she was like, you know, I think you should apply for the program. You'd be good. Okay. And I just busted my butt when I got there to get up to par with everybody else, honestly. Okay. So you go to school and eventually that leads to getting a job at a toy company. Mm -hmm. Was that, um, I know you were there for a few years. Let's talk about that experience. Was it, uh, what did you learn? Let's put it that way. What did you learn managing, you know, toy inventors actually and coming up with toy design and packaging and all that? I mean, was it, what did you learn through that whole process? Well, I mean, throughout the whole 10 years, it, it really changes. And that's something that I try to teach people when you try to go into the toy industry, you can't go in it from the angle of, I'm gonna just, I wanna work for Hasbro, right? All you right. have to go into it a little bit more strategically and think about what do I need to learn to be the best toy inventor or the best packaging designer or design director. So like, that's how I started. So okay. the first job that I got um, was at a company called Horizon Group USA. And I needed a lot of experience in product development. That's what I knew I needed. And um, I just had a, a flair for arts and crafts and that's what they do and they still do that. And I got the opportunity to join a new product development group. And okay. from there, that's where I invented three products, like in my oh. first few years right into the toy industry. And I mean, what I needed to learn then was just what the product development process was like, how um, I can control my creativity and, and like focus it when I need to how to perform market research, like that's all what okay. I learned in the first couple years. And then as I grew, you know, you have to look for jobs that are teaching you the next thing. So then as I grew, it became, how do you manage multi-million dollar accounts and brands and, and calculate for margin and ROI? Like, how do you do all of that? Now, so I got minute. all of- <laughs> Wait a minute, you, 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 you study being a, a, a toy inventor, but now you're doing marketing. And it sounds like a little bit of manufacturing knowledge, finance, right. packaging. Yeah. I mean, yeah. do they teach you? They must help you learn that, right? Okay. Well, yeah, like in the toy design program, it's pretty multifaceted. So you get a you get at least one class in every area, like one okay. class in marketing, okay. one class in making prototypes or samples, a lot of classes in toy design. 
but I just, I feel like I'm just kind of like one of those Renaissance women, you know, I like to do a lot of different okay. things. So it, I'm not going to say it was easy because when you get into the toy industry, people like to keep you in a bucket. Like if you're a designer, they like to make you a designer. Okay. They don't, it's not normal to kind of become a product okay. developer and a marketer. That's not the okay. normal path. But what I did was, and I recommend everyone do this. When I got into a toy position, when I got into Toys R Us, for example, and I was the design manager for all of Girls World, there came an opportunity to also be the product manager of a brand called Totally Me. And a product manager and a design manager are different because the design manager focuses on what things look like. Okay. And the product manager focuses on how they're made, how much they'll cost, like kind right. of the math and coordinating with China and things like that. Okay. So basically what happened is an opportunity showed itself where that position was open and okay. available. And the brand was a little bit smaller than other brands. So they really didn't want to hire out for it. And I went to my boss and I was like, Hey, can I like also have that job plus my current job too? <laughs> I want to do everything. <laughs> yeah. And no, but actually surprisingly, he looked at me and he was like, yeah, actually, that's kind of what I was planning for when I hired you. Okay. So I, I was like, oh, great. Let's do this right now. Do, um, do you think yeah. you would have been able to do so many different things if it was a really one of the big, big, big toys like a Hasbro or a, or a Mattel? Right. Would they let you have done all those things? So, you know, at, like I feel like maybe five years ago, 10 years ago, no. But I think things are changing because okay. what I'm noticing in the toy industry, because things are being because trends are being influenced by YouTubers and social media influencers, like t lead times normally are a year, right? For a toy product, they're working mm -hmm. a year in advance. They're already working on next year's releases. But what's happening is trends are coming and going so fast. Like a TikTok trend can be mm -hmm. a toy. Uh, Instagram trend can be a game. So what toy companies have to be more reactive. Okay. So I'm noticing the more successful and like the bigger toy companies like Spin Master at least have some dedicated team that is able to be agile and oh. kind of, okay. you know, multi-talented. You gotta be fast. It's fast. Yeah, it's, yeah. Fast. it's, get, it's getting it, fast. It's fashion fast. Okay. It is. Yes, I always tell people it's just like fashion. It's just like the fashion industry. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so do you, um, did you ever hire anybody that came in and, I mean, if I was a, let's say I was, I love the toy industry and I built a portfolio up of creativity and I was pitching to companies and, yeah. but could I show you my portfolio and go, hey, look at me, I'm pretty talented. Could that happen? Could you actually hire me if, if you saw the talent or the dedication, had, enthusiasm? A hundred percent. At uh, my last company, I did hire my very first hire, my assistant, um, I was looking all over. And of course I went, reached out to the heads of the Fashion Institute of Technology where I went and I asked if there was anyone there. Um, but when there wasn't anyone available for me, I went just and did research on LinkedIn and Indeed and, and looked for fresh okay. talent. And the woman that applied, she actually came from an industrial design major. Okay. So it was a general industrial design degree, which you know her parents forced her to get so that she could have more options other than to toys. Okay. But she actually, she wanted to do toys. And what made her stand out to me was that you could see in her portfolio, so she's going to a regular industrial design school. Okay. And they said, we want you to develop an eco-friendly product. So what did she develop? An eco-friendly turtle plush with okay. all of these interesting characteristics and uh, ways to teach kids about the environment. So she had, she was always so you focused did. on the toy industry that it came through to me from right. her portfolio that like, she's a toy person. So okay. I, that's why I wanted to interview her and meet okay. her. Very good. Yeah. What about toy inventors? Have you ever talked to any toy inventors that came knocking on your door? Do you, or do you push those guys away and go, get out of here? Or do you say, Hey, this is pretty good stuff. What happened? when that yeah. when someone knocked on your door from the outside. Yeah, actually toy inventors still reach out to me even today. And I mean, I guess back then what happens is, you know, if I'm not, if I'm not the top echelon at the company, I'm going to bring it to the top echelon at the company. Okay. And in all of the positions that I've been in my role and my focus was always to um, increase sales for the company. So I was looking for opportunities to make, create products that, I thought would, you know, interest our buyers and, and help us maybe steal some space from some of our competitors, right? Okay. 
So when someone uh, reached out to me, as long as I could understand what they were pitching, if it was like a quick video sizzle or a short form PowerPoint or email, and I could understand it, I would print it out, highlight things, circle things, take it to my boss and say like, this is the next big thing. Here's why I think it is. Half the time he would be like, no, I don't agree. Like go away. <laughs> but but I would still, I would pitch it like it was my own. You know, okay. like I, if I liked it, I would like pitch it like it was my own. All right. So yeah. people need to give you good stuff for you to pitch up above. Is that the catch too? Yes. Okay. Yes. All right. Because sure. you got to sell it too. They got, not only do they yeah. have to sell you, you got to take it and sell it up. Okay. So make sure that stuff looks pretty good. All right. One, Go ahead. Can I say one thing? Sure. One of the big things that I feel like inventors forget they just forget about numbers. You know, they think they don't, I don't feel like they show the concept and they know their concept is strong. Maybe they have a history of sales on Amazon. So they show the concept and they're like, I'll send you samples and I love it. They love it. everyone's happy. But when I go back and I say, great, can you share some data? Do you have some like followers online? How many sales do you have? What do you think we could expect to do with this product? Mm -hmm. They kind of freeze up. They haven't really figured out what they want to share yet. Mm -hmm. They Maybe they don't even have the data. And that for a small toy company I'm, okay. I'm talking about is like so important. It's like paramount information. That is what we need to know to really, to, for me to sell it to my boss and be like, no, look, we can increase our revenue like 1%. Like, let's go, you know? All right. So it's, yeah. it's interesting you said that because I'm a big believer in having a social media platform if I'm a creative person. Yeah. And if I have followings, if, if I am a commenting on other stuff I'm, I'm active in that world yeah and i keep on telling everybody that's important to companies too to see what you can bring to the party so yes all right you're a big believer in that too and i love to 100%. hear 100 percent. i'm active too you okay. know I'm all over the place um, comment on your stuff <laughs> now <laughs> you're doing something different now yeah you're you're educating potential toy people now let's talk about what you're doing today and because you're you're really to me, you're delivering some really great stuff over there. So thank you. And I love it. And so thank what you. are you doing now? Right. So I launched um, the toycoach.com and the podcast making it in the toy industry. So the whole reason I did all of this is just I've spent so long in my career building teams and building okay. really diverse, awesome teams and motivating them. And I just got to the point where I realized I wanted to do that for more and more people. And today is just, it's just the perfect age to do that okay. with like online courses and podcasts and emails and things like that. So I started the podcast and I thought it would just be something I did on the side to help me learn and, and just help me like retain all of my own information. But quickly people started to reach out to me and it just became an opportunity to really like network and and connect different people to one another in the toy industry. So, so what's I mean, it called? One, Wait a minute, I'm killing it. Uh, I did. I making it in the toy industry. I said it. It's making it in the toy industry. Thank that you. is the podcast. Okay. Yes. It. I mean, I go over everything in that podcast. I, I go it. over. You know, I come up with design principles that I okay. see and kind of analyze. I teach about how to think like a buyer, how to think about your product on shelf, how to think about it online. And just everything from my experience, but also my conversation with friends. And I just kind of compile it all related to the toy industry because so, I feel like the hardest part is finding information specific to the it, toy it, industry, it, right? It, it is. Yeah. So I'm going to tell everybody, if you want more yeah. information about the toy industry, if you want to hear yeah. the real deal, if you want to get the secrets, the strategy, if you want to know how to be successful in the toy industry, they should follow you. For sure. Yeah. And if you want motivation, people find me very motivational. Okay. I love it. Well, thank you very yeah. much for coming on. And um, thanks for having me. We're going to have you back because I think yes. your, your information is so spectacular. We'll dive into some other yeah. things, but thank you very much. And everyone, much, information is going to be down below where you can connect, learn as much as you can about the toy industry, and jump in and have a blast. It's a lot of fun. Stephen Key mm -hmm. here. Thanks for watching. Subscribe down below. Bye, everybody.